Well, I wanted to start off with a story about a little bird. I've got a little picture here, all right? Cute little parakeet. There was a cute little parakeet one time, and his name was Chippy. That's a cute little bird name, right? He was a happy little bird. He was content every day. He sat on his perch. He would swing and sing. And, and every day, Chippy's owner took the initiative to clean out his cage. He was very well taken care of. And so one day, she took this uh, attachment from the end of her vacuum cleaner and stuck it in the cage to remove the sediment and everything that had fallen to the bottom. But just then, as she was doing this, what happens? The phone rings. Well, the phone rings, and as she's trying to get it out of her pocket, of course, she's not paying attention to where this end of this vacuum cleaner is at. And so what does she do? She moves it, and then all of a sudden she hears a... <laughs> little Chippy got sucked into the vacuum cleaner. So as you can imagine, she is freaking out because she's sure that she has just killed her bird. So she turns off the phone and the vacuum cleaner and she rips open the bag to the vacuum cleaner and inside the bag is little Chippy and he's still alive. But let me tell you, he's stunned by the trauma. Who wouldn't be, right? So the, the, the bird is just covered with all kinds of grime uh, that, that's there in a vacuum bag. And so the, the owner did the only thing that she could think to do. She grabbed him and took him up to the bathroom and kind of washed him under the faucet. And then realizing that little Chippy was all wet and cold and shivering, she did what any good bird owner would do, right? She reached for her hair dryer and she blasted the little guy, trying to, trying to dry him off. I mean, poor little Chippy didn't even know what had hit him, right? Well, a couple of days after the experience, a reporter later heard about this story and, and wrote about the event and talked to Chippy's owner. And he asked how the bird was doing after this traumatic event. And the owner said, well, Chippy just doesn't sing much anymore. He just sits and stares. <laughs> it's no wonder, right? I mean, one minute, the little guy was swinging and singing, and before he knew it, he was sucked in, he was washed up, and he was blown away by a hairdryer. You know what, I think a lot of us have been like Chippy. Now, I don't, I don't hope that many of us have been sucked into a vacuum cleaner, but all of us have been in a similar moment as Chippy. When things seem to be going great and life seems to be going fine, then wham, what happens? Or happiness is taken away. And it's hard to get happy back sometimes, isn't it? Just like Chippy couldn't get his happy back. Because happiness can be so fleeting. Happiness can come and go. It, it can be taken away when we're hurt. It can be taken away when we're frustrated, when we're angry. And it can be, even be seen to be taken away by other people in our lives as well, by circumstances in our lives. And so this asks this question of where can I really find happiness? How do I really find happiness? Where, where do I find it? I mean, I'm not just talking about the fleeting. I'm talking about the kind of happiness that sticks. How do we find what the Bible calls joy? How do we find this? I mean, joy is this abiding sense of God's love and, and provision, even when the toughest things come into our lives. How do we find this? Well, in Psalm chapter 1 today, as we, as we start this, this book, God directs us to think about how we can find happiness simply in His Word. Now, the, the very first psalm, we're not 100% sure who wrote it. It's anonymous. Most of the psalms you'll find are attributed to someone. This one is not, although most people think that it was David that wrote this. But, but as we look in this psalm, what we find is that we can find happiness not in the things or the people, but the word that God gives to us. And I'm going to be reading from the NIV. I know we've already heard the word when Grady shared it with us, but, but I want us to, to hear it again today. And I want us to, to see how important the word is for us to find joy and that we should praise God for the word that we have been given because we take, this, we take this word, we take this book for granted. We don't realize how special this is. And, and, and so I want to go ahead and read it. Let's go ahead and read verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of the sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. Do you, do you see what's going on there in this verse? I, I underlined some words there because we see these action words, and what's happening is in this verse, there's this seemingly downward spiral that's happening. 
It, it all starts off with a person who's maybe just walking around, who's living life in the counsel of the wicked, maybe adopting some of the principles that are not godly. It starts with just kind of being amongst that group. And then what happens is then the person stands in the way and stands in those principles, and so they persist in practicing evil. And then lastly, it says that they sit. Do you see that? That they sit, and then what do they do? They mock other people who want to do what's right. But the word, but the word here says, but blessed is the person who doesn't even begin to go down this road. You know, when it comes to sin in our lives, it starts somewhere. We didn't, we didn't become a liar a full-blown liar just out of the blue. It came with little things. It, 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 it didn't come to maybe speaking unwholesome language or stories. It, it started somewhere, and that's what we see here, is that when we stay away from the Word of God, and we start sitting, or, or it says here in the passage, actually walking, and then what do we do? We stand, and then we actually sit. It, it, it has a downward spiral in your lives. I mean, in your own life, what great sins in your life started off as small ones? Bigger lies then lead to normalizing it. That's what we see here in this passage. Normalizing it then led down to looking on those who, who do the right thing. See, God blesses those who avoid the road to begin with, who don't even start down it. Now this makes sense because when we follow God's word, think of the pain that we avoid by doing what is right. See, that is the blessing of what God's word is, is that God's word is there to protect us. And so that's a reason we give him praise. But look in verse two, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law, he meditates day and night. You know, not, hap, notice that happiness, and that's what we're trying to answer here, right? How do we find happiness? How do we find joy in our lives? It, it's not something that we create. We try really hard to create happiness. We think if we just have a certain amount of money or we have a certain number of friends or we have the right kind of uh, look to our family or we do this or we do that. If we do these things, I'm going to be happy. I mean, we spend so much time spending money and effort into things to be happy. But the problem is, is that we need it more and more. But what we see here in verse 2 is it tells us that we find joy, we find happiness, we find, as it says here, delight in the Word of God. That's when we make the Word of God a part of us. And then I, I like verse 3, and this is really the key verse today. He is like a tree that's planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. wither. Whatever he does prospers. That's why we have a, a tree up here on stage with me today. See, when we're rooted near the water of God's Word, we, it's like a tree. We have strength and stability. We have fruitfulness and, and beauty and shade. We, we take what the tree gives us and we enjoy it and, and we grow stronger. When our happiness is in His Word, we are rooted and we are well fed and we're able to give more. When the storms come into our lives, our roots hold firm. Something cool happened here early in, earlier in service. You wouldn't maybe know this aspect, but, but I do. I think it was when Travis was putting together the songs this week, that, that final song we sang just before the communion, He is my firm foundation. He didn't know that I was going to be referring to Matthew chapter 7. Because in Matthew 7, Jesus talks of two builders, right? The one who builds on the rock and the one who builds on the sand. See, the difference between the two builders is that one was rooted in the Word of God and the other one wasn't. That's how the, the house stood, because it was rooted on God. It was rooted on His Word. And that's what the psalmist here is saying, is that when we are rooted near the water of God's Word, we can expect to find that true joy and that true happiness. But look in verse 4, we see this switch happen. It says, not so the wicked, they're like chaff that the wind blows away. If, if you don't know what chaff is, chaff is just kind of the leftover parts from wheat after, or grain when it's, been, when it's been winnowed, when it's been cleared. And, and what he's saying here is that evil leads to worthlessness. Evil leads to worthlessness because remember, God is the only one that will last for eternity. And then it says in verse 5, Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. 
There's no place to stand for anyone who stands in the place of wickedness. John the Baptist refers to this in Matthew 3. He says his winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn, and what does it say? And burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. You know, nobody likes to think or talk about hell for obvious reasons, but that's exactly what, what Jesus talked about throughout his ministry and here John the Baptist, is that that is, that is the defi- destination for evil, is hell. And then we see this psalm summed up. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. See, see this psalm is rooted in God's providence. God is going to provide the way for those who seek after Him. He'll provide the way. And so the question is, which way will we go? And so the point for us today is, is that a happy life is rooted in the word of life. If you want to find true joy and happiness in your life, it's not going to be found in people or things. It's going to be found in rooting yourself in the Word of God and understanding the person who gave us those words. Because God's Word is true. And something else too, God's God's Word, it works. (laughs) I'm 44 years old. Here in a few months, I'll be 45. Some of you think I'm a old in here some of you think i'm a young pup right i'm i'm kind of like in the middle right now i'm kind of in that middle age there right now right um i don't know though i'm i don't know it's 45 really middle age. i'm getting close to 50 now it's crazy but uh <laughs> i hear you okay all right you're you're all saying you poor thing right okay all right but you know what so many of us um I don't know about, I, I, I know for me, I've seen how the Word of God stands true. It's proven out. It, it's rooted in not just truth, but in reality. It stood the test of time. But unfortunately, many of us, we don't go to the Word of God. We look for happy in the wrong places, and that's when we should expect the bad results. We, many of us, like we read here in the psalm, we often listen to the wrong words or the wrong counsel. And what do we ta- do is we take that from the wrong people. And then what do we do is then we try, then we have this distorted view of what happiness is. And then what happens is joy then goes out the door. What I want us to think about today as I'm talking about the word is, is like I mentioned earlier, this tree. If you look there in Psalm 1-3, again, it says, that a person, we, can be like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, wither, whatever he does prospers. You know, there's just something special about a tree, isn't there? I know yesterday I was working out in the yard. Uh, it was kind of, we have like this fire pit area, and it's kind of gotten overgrown, and I needed to clean it up, so I was pulling all this stuff up out of the ground. But it was in a wooded, kind of a shady area. I really appreciated that yesterday when it was whatever it was, 92 degrees or whatever. I really, really appreciated it. There's just something about a tree. And, and that is a perfect example for us of what God's Word does in our lives. See, today I want us to praise God for how His Word has been proven trustworthy. You know, when I look at a tree, one of the things that amazes me is their longevity. I mean, think of, think of a tree, especially a big tree. How many storms has that tree weathered to be able to become that large? And, and think of the weather, especially here in Indiana, right? They have the heat and they have the cold. They have to stand up against insects. Some trees have um, fungus and different things that can, that can affect their health. There's something about a tree that shows its trustworthiness. You know, I, I bet you, does, do any of you know what the oldest tree in the world is? I, I did some research this week. Does anybody know? Do you, do, do it, does anybody know where it's at? might surprise you. The oldest tree in the world is right here in our own country. It's in California. And this is a picture of them right here on the screen. Right? These trees have been called Methuselah, connected to the... Of course, the, uh, the character in the Old Testament that's the longest living person. These trees are called Methuselah. This tree, from what they've been able to gather, has lived for over 5,000 years. Isn't that crazy? I mean, think about it. It was around when this psalm that we just read 
was written by David, most likely by David. It had been around a long time. Think of what that tree has seen over 5,000 years. The challenges that it's faced. The Word of God is, is very much in the same way. It's been around a lot longer than that tree, obviously. It's, it stood up to the doubters. It stood up to the haters. It stood up to those who scorn it. It stood true when it's challenged historically and scientifically. It's reliable and it's trustworthy. How is that? It's because it's from God. God's nature Who he is is right here in this book. And we can rely on him to keep his word and and to be trustworthy in his word. And so what do we do is we give him praise. That's what the psalmist does here. We give him praise for his word. There is no one else we worship for their words, is there? I don't worship anybody for their words. (laughs) But we worship God for his word because God always keeps his word. That's why. Another reason and something we learn about trees is we praise God for how His Word provides shade of His love. Like I already said, we really appreciate trees and their shade this time of year. Isn't it amazing um, the difference in temperature between a tree and being in its shade and not? I mean, it's like a 10 or 20 degree, at least the way it feels, it's like a 10 or 20 degree difference. There's just something about the shade that comes from a tree. And, and there's more to it than just the temperature difference. It protects us from UV rays. Sometimes if it's, if it's got a big enough canopy, it can even protect us from rain. It protects us from overheating, the brightness of the sun. It protects us. That is what God's word does. God's word protects us. His word is there to give us prosperous, healthy, joyful, peaceful lives. I really don't think, and, and I know I don't, I really don't think we fully appreciate the Bible. We carry it around with us, either you know, in the print form or we have it on a tablet or a phone or whatever. For someone like me, I've been in the church my entire life, I think I take it for granted. I take, it's crazy to think, but it's true. I take for granted that the God of the universe has given me his own words and spoke to me. I take that for granted, and yet we shouldn't. God didn't have to reveal himself to us. But he decided to do so in this this amazing book. Could I know that God exists without the Bible? Sure. The Bible even tells us that. The Bible says that we can know God just by looking at creation, by looking at the world around us. We can know that God exists, but I can't know who God is without his word. We should give praise to God that he has revealed himself through his word. And one of the things that he reveals about himself is his love. We see it throughout the pages of the Bible. And he shows that love in a lot of different ways. But that's the shade of his love that envelops us and is over us and seeks to protect us. Sometimes we might see God's word as a drag. We might say that it's backwards. We might say that it's old. That's something I hear a lot today, that it's rooted in all of the... But God's word, it stands the test of time because it protects us. It watches over us. I'm afraid that a lot of the ideas and the concepts that we see in our world today that people have readily adopted in opposition to God's word, they're going to find in the end that there are great consequences that come. And we're seeing that already, I think. There are great consequences that come when we move away from God's word. God's word is there to protect us because he loves us. He loves me and he loves you. There's something else about this tree, this illustration, and that is is that we could praise God for how his word in us produces fruit. You know, in my yard, we have a couple of apple trees. We put in a peach tree a couple of years ago. I grew up in Florida, um, and we had orange trees. Our whole backyard was just filled with orange orange trees. We so love the fruit that comes off those trees. You know what? If it wasn't for good, healthy trees, we wouldn't have all this amazing fruit. But see, it's only healthy trees that produce fruit. And we give thanks to God because it's His Word that gives us the water that produces the fruit that comes forth from our lives. 
when we love and serve, when we show the different aspects of who God is through our own lives, we know that that is from the water that He has supplied to us through His Word. I mean, without Him, we wouldn't have the abilities to do the things that we do. And so what do we do is we thank Him today. We praise God today for producing fruit through us. And so here's what I want to do today. I want to just give you a challenge this week. You know, this series, while there is, we are kind of looking at the Word and, and, and kind of look at some different aspects like I've done today, really what this series is about, I'm hoping, is that it's something that you take and, and that you do during the week. And so my challenge for us this week is I want you to find a tree. That shouldn't be too hard, all right? I think we've got plenty of trees around us. Maybe you don't have one in your yard. There's probably a park nearby. Um, I would probably be careful about going on somebody else's property, okay, uh, before, you know, to sit under a tree. You might want to ask them first, okay? But I want to encourage you this week to find a tree, and I want you to just take time under that tree to look at it and to worship God, to think of the word that he has put in you. Maybe you can read through some of the Psalms. As, you, as I already said, we're going to go through this for 10 weeks. So that tells you we're not going to go through the whole, every single book of Psalm, in the book of Psalms. We would have a sermon series that would probably last several years if we did that. So there are plenty of Psalms for you to read through that we won't. I want to encourage you to read through the Psalms. Maybe take some time to listen to some praise music. Maybe it's through a phone or a CD player. If that's, you still you know, use a CD player, whatever it is. But take time to worship God this week. Worship Him for the word that he gives. I know our students, you guys are out of school now. No school, right? Yay, all right, no school. You've got maybe this much more time. Take some time this week. Stop, find a tree, just enjoy the shade, enjoy who God is. I know some of you were, you know, were working during the week and it can kind of be hard, maybe on your break, maybe at lunch, right? There might be a park or something down the way from wherever you work. One of the things that's kind of been cool to me, I've noticed up here, even in our own park, people go down there for their lunch break sometimes. But go and, and just take time and worship God and thank Him for the shade of His protection and the shade of His love in your life. And maybe, maybe this is even uh, something you could do with some friends, your family, something you can do together to just enjoy the shade of God's love. See, here's the thing. What Psalms 1 here, and it, really what Psalms 1 is doing is it's setting us up for the entire book. What Psalms 1 is teaching us is that happiness results from whom you're happy in. Being happy in God's word and understanding who he is, that's how we find true joy. It, it really does come down to who you are planted in. And so my question for us today is are you, are you planted in God's word? Thank you.